Hi, I'm Sandy, and welcome to another day in Life with Sandy. Well, good morning. <clears throat> it is early, too. Good morning. Today is... Oh, you know, I forgot to change my calendar in the house. I just remembered that. Today is Wednesday. Well, hello for the second time. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd. We do have one birthday. Today is Dawn Engel's birthday. So, Dawn, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dawn. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Well, just like Tiffany yesterday, you're the only one celebrating a birthday today that I know of. The rest of the world might be having another birthday with you. I don't know about them. Um, as you can see, my little short little clip of my day, I did start to do a video when I left this morning and uh, my microphone went dead. I love the microphone Weight Watchers with Carrie and her husband Corey gave it to me a couple years ago and I love it. The only thing I don't like about it is um, when you're when you're going to put it on it has like a green light but if it's turned off it has a blue light to you know like when you first turn it off but it never does anything to tell you like flash or anything to let you know that the charge is low so you don't know it until you're editing your video which I thought, you know, I'm going to edit my video this afternoon and then I'll have everything all set and then I'll just have to put my dinner on and then uh, close out the video earlier because Wednesdays, Jim and I watch everything. We watch all of the Chicago's on Channel 4, which is NBC. And then we watch um, Survivor, which is on CBS. And so it's a, like a long night of watching TV. So I wanted to get my video all together. So I started to do the editing and it went dead. <laughs> went completely dead by microphone. So, and I have a little um, attachment that came with it that uh, you plug in to charge it, but somehow I lost that. I don't know where it went. I can't find it anywhere. But now that I think about it, I think that's the part that I found in the, the I have to check that out. But Jim's, Jim has a, uh, I have an iPhone. Jim has a Galaxy. His, his charger works in the microphone. So um, I have to unplug his stuff and all that stuff just to charge my microphone. So I'm charging the microphone. And so now I'm just trying to talk with the memory of what I talked about because um, I babbled on a lot, like quite a long time. So um, I was gonna just do a voiceover, but I don't like doing voiceovers. It's just, to me, they're annoying. For me, they're annoying. I don't know, maybe for you they're not, but for me, that's just annoying, so I don't do it. I don't have a problem listening to other people do voiceovers. I want to make that very clear. I don't have a problem with other videos, other people that put up uh, content that do that. To me, I just don't like to do that. This Cat on Point, which I know she's taking a little break from her channel right now, but uh, she does an excellent job doing a voiceover. She just she does a really, really good job. A Kim at a girl on her phone does a really good job. Not so much. I know a lot of you tell you tell me that I talk myself down too much, especially in my cook with me videos. Um, I don't mean it as a degrading thing to, towards myself. It's just I just kind of get disgusted with myself that I think that I know how to do this and then I don't. And then I watch my grandson's videos and he's like ten and he's like far surpasses me, like he's in a galaxy far far away <laughs> as far as his editing skills. He's just like it's amazing to me how he's figured that all out on his own, you know. But <clears throat> You know, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I'm trying to learn some. I'm trying to do better. I think my editing skills are pretty good. They're not the best, but I think they're. Doing, I think I put up a pretty good video each day. It's not. Uh, it's not easy doing a daily vlog. It really isn't. Uh, at the beginning, I had so much to talk about, but now it's like I don't like to rehash stories. Although I know I have new subscribers that probably haven't heard the stories, but then I don't want to bore people with oh, here we go again. She's telling that story again. <laughs> it's like nah, I just I don't want to be doing that. So, one of the things I was talking about was I was going to ask you to pray for Edie over at Edie's Adventures. Mom, her name is Ruth. Um, she was in the hospital, I think it was yesterday because I watched the video today. Um, her mother ha has to take Lasex and she doesn't like taking it because it makes you go to the bathroom. And so she doesn't want to get up to use the bathroom. And, and she has COPD. And so she had to go to the hospital because she was having some problems. 
So if you could say some prayers for Edie's mom that she'll get better, first of all, but most important that she'll listen to the doctors and take her medicine. Um, I don't like taking medicine myself, but, uh, you know, if the doctor prescribes it, there's a reason that they do. But sometimes you just get, as you get older, you get stubborn. You get more stubborn, I should say, because, uh, you know, I, I, I find I'm the same way. And then Edie was also, she, it was a really nice video because she was talking about answering questions about everything. I remember that when my kids went to private school, they went to a Catholic school. They went, their Catholic school was called St. Brendan's. Um, we were, I was in charge with, you know, a couple other ladies and we, we handled just about everything. It was kind of like Edie and her husband, you know, like they do everything. Her and Ray do just about do everything. For, it, I know there's other people helping you, Edie. I know it's not, I, Edie doesn't come across like, oh, look at poor me. I'm the only one working at the church. <laughs> Please don't, don't think that that's what I'm saying. But I understand how people kind of rely on you a little bit more than they would Joe Schmo down the street. You know, it's like, oh, you know what? Who can we get? Oh, we'll get, we'll get Edie. She'll do it. She always does it. And I kind of had that same, philosophy going when I worked at the church because um, I was very active in the church. Uh, I was ahead of so many fundraisers. We had um, a road rally that uh, myself and two other ladies that were, we were on the uh, Moms and Dads Club, which is like the PTA. And we wanted to come up with some fundraisers to help offset the cost of field trips. And so we did a fundraiser for a road rally. And there was a lot of work because we, what we did was we went around to the, well, we didn't even go around to that merchants and ask them if we could put anything in their windows or anything like that. Uh, the way a road rally works is you get these clues under where you want to go and you go to that spot next and then, um, find the, find the little sign that like, oh, like the one was like we had to go to the Starlight TV on Nine Mile and Harper. And we'll tell you it's the Starlight TV at Nine Mile and Harper. So you got to get to Nine Mile and Harper and find the Starlight TV. Then you got to find out where on the building we hid the next clue. And then we would have a clue that would tell you what your next stop should be, where you should go. And uh, it sounds easy enough, but we had to make things a little bit more complicated because we didn't want people following other cars like, oh, well, we're not going to worry about the clues. We're going to follow Sandy and Sandy's going to take us to each one and we'll find out where she's going and we'll just sit in the car and we'll follow her. No, what we did was we made everybody go to different spots, but like in a different order. So even though everybody was going to Starlight TV, and it might have told you that you're supposed to go to, let's say, Royal Bryan's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you, I kind of forget, forget how we did it, but we did it in such a complicated manner that we had to give you like a little panic cheat card. So um, what we would do is like we would figure out like your car number one and these are the 10 stops you're going to go to. And then we just picked an order that you were going to go to them. And then um, if you got lost anywhere and you couldn't figure out the clue and you couldn't figure out where you were going, you could pull the little slip off and it would tell you where you're supposed to be for that clue. Like if the clue number three, you should be here. Well, not everybody went to the same clue number three. So it was it was really complicated. We only did it one year. <laughs> because it was just, it was a lot of work, but we made a lot of money. We had like 20 cars or something like that. The last stop was the pizza uh, pizza place, and you got pizza and a pitcher of beer, and then we gave out prizes and stuff, but we had somebody from the Detroit Tigers. He was the second baseman, participated in our thing, and one of the, since when I knew that they were going to do that, and my Jimmy, more, more so than Danny, was so into the baseball, and this was his favorite player. you think I'd remember who the player was, but I don't remember who the player was. But I know he played second base. Um, one of the clues was they had to come in, and they had to find Jimmy in the house and get the clue from Jimmy. So Jimmy was like in his glory, him and Danny waiting for the people to come to get the clues from them. So, um, but it was fun, but we did that. Another thing that we were in charge of is we had a fundraiser for school jackets, so we had to go to JCPenney's, which is where we went, and uh, they recommended, because they wouldn't do it, because they had, you know, like all their stuff has come in, but they had recommended a sports shop that let, that uh, did it at cost. They didn't charge us any, they didn't make any profit off it. They kind of like a donation. It was somebody that worked in the, that was a member of the church. And so we did t-shirts, and we did uh, polo shirts, and we did jackets and sweatshirts that said St. Brendan's. Had a little shamrock, because that was our, Logo was uh, it was the sham because we were the shamrocks, and then in the shamrock you could put your name, and they would embroider your name once you ordered it. That was a huge fundraiser. We did that. Like I said, we always did bingo, and uh, we I, I did all of these extra stuff just to kind of earn some extra points because they if you did so much activity they took so much off of your tuition. 
uh, not so much like they wouldn't give you cash for doing it, but like they would say, like, we'll take, give you $25 off if you do, if you do the bingo every month for six months. They'll take $25. I, I'm just guessing on, guesstimating on a price that they gave us. And so, you know, I was going to do bingo anyhow. My dad did it all the time. I told you that, how much he loved it. So I didn't have a problem doing the bingos and earning the money from that. I also was a lunch mother where I did get paid cash. So I, um, I used that money to um, pay for the tuition. And then I, I told you the other day, my mother, when my father passed away, was, went on a gambling splurge in Vegas, made so much money. When she came home, she paid the whole year's tuition for the kids, finished the year out that she was there because my father died in December. My mother went to Vegas in February. So I was making monthly payments. She finished the payments off. Um, she gave equal amounts of money to my other brothers and sisters because um, their kids were going to pu public school or they didn't have kids, one of the two. So she paid for all of that. And then she was going to buy a cottage. So um, we found the land. We found the perfect spot up in Lexington where we wanted to put a cottage. It was like in a small little community. It was close to the town. It was close to the church. It was close to the beach. There weren't a lot of cottages around us. And it was a beautiful setting. And so my mother had put a deposit down. She was going to buy the land so we could build a cottage. But then when we did the perk test, we found out that uh, we couldn't pass that. So we couldn't put a septic tank in, which means you couldn't put a bathroom in. And then when we tapped for the well, there was no water. So even if we built a structure, you can't get occupancy because there's no water and there's no bathroom. So that dream kind of fell through. That was like... It was disappointing because we really came that close to owning a cottage. So now we just rent a cottage every year. But um, I was so involved in church and it always seemed like it's the same people doing it. It's like always, you couldn't count on new people. And, then the, and a lot of times the ones that didn't do anything were the ones that complained the most. The one of the prime examples was um, I had two boys in school and I would hear from other people how much it would, they would complain that the girls always had to wear a jumper. When they were 7th or 8th grade, they could wear a skirt. But for up until like the 5th grade, 6th grade, they had to wear a jumper with a white blouse with a Peter Pan collar. Um, it could either be a long sleeve blouse or a short sleeve blouse, but those were the stipulations. And then you had to, um, you had to wear, uh, oh, you could wear any kind of shoes you wanted, but you had to wear white uh, ankle socks. But the boys could wear whatever they wanted as long as it was a shirt and a tie. They could wear, you know, it didn't even have to be a white shirt. It could be any color shirt. It could be any color tie. And so many of the mothers of girls complained that it didn't seem fair. And myself and um, Louise, who was the other lady that was with me, she had three boys. So we had gone to J.C. Penney's to figure out if they would do an, a uniform for the boys. So they would do green twill pants or green jean pants or green cotton pants. And then um, they had a white shirt that you could get a regular collar or you can get the button-down Oxford collars. And then they would do the green ties. So we presented that to the nuns because the nuns were the ones that were in charge of that. And they loved the idea. Oh, my gosh. You would have thought we started a revolution. A revolution because the, the parents of the boys went crazy how unfair this was to make these poor boys dress in a certain uniform, when it was as long as they had a shirt and tie, and what difference did it make? Well, then it was like at a PTA, or like a mother, mom, and dad's meeting. It was not a PTA. They, well, PTA, moms and dads was the PTA type of thing. There was such a roar. It was like, and I was the president of the mom and dads at the time, and uh, they complained so much. And I, it was like the. It was like the worst meeting ever as far as the, the the girl mother, the mothers of the girls were attacking the mothers of the boys. And then the mothers of the boys were attacking the mothers of the girls because it didn't seem fair. And so they kept saying, well, if it's okay for the boys to wear any kind of pants and shirt and a tie, why can't it be any kind of jumper or shirt or a skirt for the girls? What difference did it make? And oh, it was such an uproar. And it did pass. <laughs> so it was like awful. And then that was not... And so they had to do this for the for the uh, new year because we passed the resolution like in April. So they could finish out the last two months wearing like the normal uniforms like they wore. But come September, they had to do that. And then we arranged with pennies to have sales for the boys so that they didn't have to pay full price. It was, they were on sale, so they couldn't complain about that. And, uh, oh, they went crazy. So when we decided to do the shirts and the jackets and the sweatshirts as a fundraiser in September... Uh, we were hoping that we weren't going to run into too much flack because we were just got over the flack from the, the uniforms for the boys. 
but it was a really big hit. It was a really big seller because, you know, they need coats. And, and it kind of gave them the sense that they were part of the community a little bit more. And so when you'd see them lining up in the mornings, uh, because my house was right next door to the school, I shared the driveway with the, 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 uh, the nuns and the priests. There was uh, three nuns and two priests. And that behind me in the, my backyard was the three-car garage. I didn't, I wasn't allowed to use the garage. Two of the garages were for each of the priests, and then the nuns shared one car. The three nuns shared one car. <laughs> but uh, but I could look out my living room window and see Jimmy in the fourth grade on the first floor, or I could see him in the seventh grade on the second floor when he was in the seventh grade. And then I could see Danny on the first floor when he was uh, in the first grade. And then when he was in the uh, fifth grade, I could see him on the second floor. So they just knew that I could just look out the window and see that they were not being being behaving or anything like that. So, um, no. And so I learned I learned very early on who you could count on and who you couldn't. And Edie, I think you're one of the people that you can count on. But you know, at least you're giving them like a two year notice of when you're going to step down. And hopefully, somebody does step up to the plate. But I know exactly when I was pregnant with Christy, and I was just my term was coming to an end. I was due in March, and I thought, you know. I thought, you know, like we're going to have the election now because I, I have this will be my third child. I, I'm already a Cub Scout leader. I already coach uh, soccer and baseball, and I'm a lunch mother, and I'm on the worship committee, and I do the lecturing at church. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of burnt out. So we were having an election. We couldn't get not one person to be nominated for um, president of the moms and dads. And I, I said, well, then the organization's just going to collapse because I, I'm, I'm nine months pregnant and I'm still doing this. And you're telling me all you young mothers out here that are younger than me, because I was 30 at the time, and there was a lot of mothers that were like 25, 26, you know, like, like right around that age. And uh, I'm thinking, you could, you could be doing this. You can be doing this. And so I said, I am not running again. I just, I'm just i definitely not. And I listed all the things I was doing being nine months pregnant. I kind of guilted some people into it, but I don't care. But you know what? It came about. Somebody did run for it. They got elected, and they did. I think they did a good job, if not better than me. I mean, I... Did the best I could, but I think the, the program didn't fail when they started. So um, it's, it's a lot of work. And, you know, like it's, it comes to like even now when I kind of sit back when I go to church and I see the same familiar faces doing the stuff. Not so much now because our priest is really, I don't know. He's, I don't know what he's done with our parish. I really don't. He, he's eliminated the ushers. He's eliminated the collection baskets. He has a collection basket in the back of the church that uh, there's a guard by it that watches it to make sure nobody steals out of it. So when you go to church, you drop your envelope in the basket. So there's nobody doing that. When you go up to communion, there's only one person, and they only go one row at a time. We have 3,500 families in our parish. Um, that's a lot of people going up to communion. Now, they have the two priests up at the front doing it, but it's one row at a time. And we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sections of people that are going to go to communion. So it takes a little while. So he got rid of that. He got rid of our baptismal fount. I have no idea how people get baptized anymore because it's never done during Mass. It's always done separately. But he got rid of that in the lobby. He got rid of all of the the votive candles. So like, you know, like you could put some candles and pray for a loved one. He got rid of all of those. He sold our piano that was donated to the church. <laughs> And as far as I know, and I don't know this for 100% certainty, I'm just going by rumor mill, that he does all the counting of the money. He doesn't have, a, because there used to be a committee that counted the money uh, for the collections. Now, I don't know how true that part is. I don't know. But uh, that just doesn't seem legal. That doesn't seem fair, and it doesn't seem safe, as far as I'm concerned. And he's a priest that believes uh, in the 1940s and 1950s teachings. And so that's kind of how he runs the parish, is like, stepping back in time to the 40s and the 50s. So, anyway, I don't even know how I got on that subject. But anyway, I, I just, uh, oh, just seeing that, you know, like you see the same people doing things at church. He still has lectures, so you still see the same people lecturing. And uh, so it's just, I don't know. It's sad when people don't want to step up, and it's, I, I commend the people that do everything that they can for their parish and uh, do as much as they can. I just feel that I did my time. I know that sounds like a prison sentence, which it wasn't. I thoroughly enjoyed everything I did. 
but you just kind of get burnt out after a while and you just get tired of people depending on you when they're capable of taking over and they just don't. So, but I'm sure I talked about other things too, but we're going on 20 minutes. So let me show you what I had to eat and uh, I'll show you my tracker at the end. I, I'm going to be under my points today, so I'm not going to get a blue dot. That's never my goal to get a blue dot. But um, I did a casserole for, um, for dinner. I'm going to do a casserole for dinner that's going to be a part of a collab that's going to be on Sunday at 9 o'clock. It's called um, My Ace in the Hole Casserole. And this is just a Mexican casserole. So I'll show you what it looks like. The way I'm making it my way, it's like 10 points for each piece which I'm only going to have one piece, and I'm going to have some um, refried beans with it. Um, but um, the um, recipe actually is a Weight Watcher recipe with, I think it's seven points for serving, or you can cut it down to five points if you make it uh, more, per you know, like they're saying it's six portions. If you make it eight portions, it'll be five points. But um, anyway, I'm just going on now. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button, share if think somebody might like to see it. Talk to you guys soon. So let me see what we had to eat today, and I will talk to you tomorrow. And look who came to visit me again today, another woodpecker. Not the male, this is the female. Okay, for breakfast, we're gonna have some oatmeal, some hot tea, an egg, grapefruit, and a banana. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd. My quote is, know what you want to do. Then, no, know what you want. Let me fix this, sorry. Know what you want, then do what it takes to achieve it. For breakfast, I'm going to have a bowl of oatmeal, some tea, an egg, grapefruit, banana, and a quarter cup of 2% milk. That's for breakfast for today. Okay, for dinner, we're going to have the Mexican casserole, which is my part of my collab on Sunday. Some iced tea and some refried beans. And I have it in my tracker here. I'm going to put a little bit of sour cream on my refried beans. <laughs>